this is a fantastic discussion, and I want to thank all the witnesses for coming here tonight to, to discuss these issues with us. And I find it so fascinating, this discussion of how we are funding our research and development and where we put our funds, because this is something I have long uh, really been thinking about, because I come from the state that had Bell Labs. And I can tell you that as I go across northern New Jersey with some of the most innovative companies in the world, so many of the people working there uh, come out of the Bell Lab system. So many of the technologies and optic lenses, et cetera, lasers, come out of the Bell Lab system. And so as we approach this, we, um, I also come from a military background, and, and everyone loves a cliche there, and I find Wall Street's the same way. And something I always hear from my friends on Wall Street is, government shouldn't pick winners and losers. And I broadly get that, because we're not China. We're not going to manage our economy, and we've seen how devastating that is in China. But we are also looking at how we fund our economy in a way that makes us competitive in a way that helps our, our companies compete. And I think, Mr. Wolf, you were talking about some of that capital going to places that then allow a less risky opportunity for private funding to come in. And I wonder if you can talk a little bit about how government makes those decisions and, what, and utilizes our capital to the best ability to fund innovation. You know, it's interesting, the Bell Labs example ultimately came from government intervention in a monopoly and forcing them to uh, invest the same sort of thing with Xerox and Xerox Park. Uh, ultimately, in both of those cases, the invention of the transistor in 1948, uh, they were not the ones to ultimately create the integrated circuit like Intel and Fairchild and others uh, ultimately did. Uh, same thing with Xerox Park, you know, it was a great uh, R&D and uh, vestige to innovation in Silicon Valley, but it was ultimately Steve Jobs and Bill Gates that came in and effectively stole the graphic user interface and created uh, modern PCs. Uh, so I, I think that there's a role of the private sector. There's a role, again, in basic science. Uh, I'm actually struck on the idea of biotech. Uh, this is a huge opportunity where NIH funding, NSF funding goes into basic science, particularly around biotech. You look at the innovation that we've had in CRISPR. You had Jennifer Doudna out west, ultimately winning the Nobel Prize. You had Fang Zhang, who's a Chinese uh, scientist now in the U.S. at Broad and MIT. And we started companies uh, around him, and uh, we want him here. We want him developing those kinds of technologies. In biotech in particular, I think that this is an area that requires a lot of attention, and I really like the comments that were just made. Um, China has something, or lacks something rather, that we have, and because of that, they are advantaged. And the thing that they lack is the ethics and regulatory apparatus that we have. And that ethics and regulatory apparatus can slow down biotech. And so I actually think that there's an opportunity here to fund the basic science, make sure that biotech gets to market. They also have another advantage which was named, which was the indifference to human rights. Now, there has been, over the recent months, a huge fad and excitement around the diet drugs. I'm sure we all know people that are taking these. Well, imagine in a year or two or five that there's a cure for Alzheimer's. Everybody would be giving it to their mother, et cetera. But what if we found out that that was tested on a million Uyghurs? What would be the morality of that? And I think that it's really important that we make sure we compete. When I grew up, I grew up in a Jewish household, and I had two words that I heard all the time, never again. It is happening again. And as people have said, indifference to injustice is the gate to hell. We should not be indifferent about the human rights abuses that are happening there. We should have more competitive science here. We should fund it, and you should allow the private market to commercialize it. I really thank you for bringing that up, because I think that is front of mind. And we started off this committee at the very beginning of our hearings hearing about what was going on with the Uyghurs. And I think it was in such sharp contrast to what America offers the world and our values um, and how important that is. And so, as we're, we're taking a look there, I can't help but be a little bit concerned because we basically looked at the China 2025 plan and said, we're going to compete here, here, and here. And yet, I think what strikes me about American innovation, and as you say, we've got to arrive there first and make sure we're out competing China, I think American innovation can take us in places far beyond China 2025. Those aren't simply the places. And I'm not sure that Chinese innovation at this point will take them far beyond that. Um, and so how do we make sure that we are doing uh, the broadest possible innovation here? And I wonder just very quickly, because um, my time's about to expire, uh, Ms. Gorman, you've been so interesting in talking about 
um, how some of uh, what we're going to set up and what we can do in things like the Chips and Science Act and, and things like the National Quantum Initiative Act, which is up for reauthorization, um, how are even small investments so critical in spurring private sector innovation and emerging tech and important to our competition with the CCP? I think it starts by recognizing the role that the government plays, that yes, we absolutely need a vibrant technology ecosystem with any idea, any garage, any startup company that Lux Capital works with, for example. Um, but we also need to recognize that sometimes there are investments that might be even too risky for venture capitalists, and that's where government steps in. And uh, my first job was at Bell Labs. Oh, that's fantastic. A great example. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.